Australian politics has been rocked yet again by a woman claiming Parliament House is a toxic place to work. Jo Tanoski was Chief of Staff for Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles and she's come forward to say she's been forced out of the high paying job she loved, leaving no one in any doubt as to why. I am the most senior female Chief of Staff on the Hill and my workplace is not safe. I raised concerns privately with the Deputy Prime Minister about some bullying behaviour within the office. He acknowledged the concerns, restated the value he placed in me and my work, and said we should have a chat about it. However, when we returned to Australia, he called me, and in direct response to the concerns I had raised, he made it clear that I should start looking for alternative employment. No fair process has been followed. I continue to be employed officially as the Deputy Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, but I have been prevented from doing my job. I know it won't be long now before I am bullied out of this place completely. I have been plagued with nightmares, flashbacks, symptoms of depression and anxiety, panic attacks. So why speak now? Ultimately, it was my daughter who convinced me to come forward. When I was in a completely broken state a few weeks ago, she said, Mum, maybe if you told people the truth, maybe someone would help you. What I want is for people to know the truth and for Richard Miles, as well as those who have enabled his behaviour, to be held accountable for what has happened. Liz Daniels is our federal politics reporter and she joins me now from Canberra. Liz, these are bombshell claims and watching that, you do really feel for Joe Tarnovsky. How much guts would it have taken for her to stand up and make these explosive claims against what is effectively one of the highest officers in the land? Well, it would have been incredibly difficult, Deb. Staffers like Joe Tanovsky, they know the media, they deal with the media behind the scenes every day, but they certainly don't front the media. So for her to have engaged a lawyer, sent out an alert and then walked into the parliament this morning to front the cameras would have taken incredible fortitude. Now, she's quite clearly distressed about what's happened. She read from a statement. She didn't name names and she didn't give details of the allegations of bullying that she is making. Her lawyer was also questioned several times and he also didn't give any specific details. But what was really clear was the emotional turmoil that Jo Tanofsky has been going through from her body language there. Uh, she really had to fight through to get through that statement. And she said, Deb, that it was an, at a moment of a severe pressure and, 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 and a, a turmoil that she, her daughter, in fact, encouraged her to tell this story. And she said that she expects the government to smear her and to dismiss these claims, but of course there are two sides to every story. What has Richard Miles himself had to say? Well, none of that happened today, Deb. Richard Miles did front question time and did answer questions and address the issue in Parliament, and I thought he addressed it with the seriousness and the gravity that it deserved. He said that he feels deeply sad about what's happened and that he has tried to manage this with concern for Joe at Tanofsky's welfare. Now, Richard Miles is not accused of doing the bullying himself. Joe Tanofsky said only that she uh, took claims of bullying to Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister, and that he said he would handle it. She says she's not happy with the way he handled it and that she has been sidelined. But for the Deputy Prime Minister, for any parliamentary office by standards, he has an incredibly low turnover of staff. And that's important because this is a highly pressurised office. He's not only the Deputy Prime Minister, he's also the Defence Minister. So a high level of security, a high level of pressure. And in this building today, many people said that his staff have an, incredibly, an incredible sense of loyalty to him. At the end of the day, though, this is a, a PR disaster for the government and they're facing a lot of pressure as it is. How much damage is this likely to do? Well, the opposition will certainly seek to capitalise on what's been a difficult week for the government uh, this today, but also earlier in the week, the Prime Minister himself having a snap in Parliament 
and accusing or as asking uh, Angus Taylor, the shadow treasurer, if he had Tourette's. Anthony Albanese ended up having to apologise formally in the chamber for what was clearly an offensive comment. Now, at this point in the electoral cycle, you don't normally see the fraying around the edges that is being seen in the Albanese government. And they do still have six months left to run on their first term of government. But, Deb, the biggest pressure cooker environment is still to come, and that is an election campaign. And we'll see how it all plays out. Liz Daniels in Canberra, thank you. Thanks, Deb.